Ever since the outbreak of COVID-19, there has been a debate over the effectiveness and public use of face masks. While several countries in Asia, Africa and America have adopted public use of masks, many countries in Europe are not yet convinced about this. In this video we will discuss the different type of mask, effectiveness and risk associated with them, suitable materials to make homemade mask, the cultural differences and much more, all based on research work published in scientific journals and reliable reports. To begin with, what is a mask? A mask is a personal protective equipment or PPE which act as a barrier to droplets and aerosols. A mask typically consists of a filtering material, sealing and fittings, and optionally, a wall which makes breathing easier. The overall performance of a mask is dependent on its material and the tightness of seal. There are mainly three types of masks, respirators, surgical mask, and non-surgical masks that include homemade and cloth masks. A respirator reduces particles that are both inhaled and exhaled by a person and they are designed to protect the wearer from droplet and aerosols transmitted directly from patients. Respirators are fluid resistant and they have a tight face seal. Examples of respirators include N95 and FFP2 which is the European equivalent of N95. Let's talk about N95 briefly as it is one of the most discussed masks during this pandemic. N95 and FFP2 are performance standards and the masks which fulfill these standards are certified to use N95 or FFP2. The N in N95 stands for non-oil, whereas 95 indicates its filtering efficiency. Therefore, an N95 respirator can prevent over 95% of non-oil particles from inhaling or exhaling. A surgical or medical mask is made up of multiple layers of non-woven fabric or paper and has a metal strip or wire for adjustment over the nose. The main function of a surgical mask is to reduce the particles coming out of a person into the environment. In this pandemic, surgical mask and respirator should be reserved for medical workers. Non-surgical, homemade or cloth masks are cheap and easy to make and have been recommended for public use in many countries. These masks are not fluid resistant but do prevent droplets from coming out of a person to some extent. But how effective are homemade masks and what materials are good for making them? Well, in the research conducted by Davis and team on household materials against a virus about four times smaller than coronavirus, they found out that vacuum cleaner bag had the highest efficiency of 86% followed by tea towel, antimicrobial pillowcase, pillowcase, silk cloth, 100% cotton t-shirt, and scarf. These were all tested in comparison with a surgical mask of 90% efficiency. While vacuum cleaner bag and tea towel are efficient filters, the study showed that they offer resistance to breathing, which results in higher face seal leakage. Therefore, they recommended pillowcase and 100% cotton t-shirt for homemade mask. In another research by Rangasamy and team, they studied the filtration performance of common fabric materials against aerosols and found these materials to be less effective when compared to an N95 respirator which had over 95% efficiency. Sweatshirts were tested to be more efficient as compared to towel, followed by scarves, commercial cloth mask, and t-shirt. It should be noted again that the filtration efficiency of a material should not be confused with the performance of mask as it also depends on face seal and transmission modes of the virus. There is still uncertainty amongst the scientific community if this coronavirus is transmitted through airborne particles or droplets. A study on professional and homemade masks found that the performance of a respirator was about 50 times better than the homemade mask. In a study in Vietnam, researchers found cloth masks to be least effective and recommended not to be used by health workers. 
while studies prove that homemade masks are less effective, most researchers support the use of homemade masks by non-medical workers in absence of other type of masks. But what about widespread public use of mask? Although researchers agree to the public use of mask, the guidelines of WHO do not recommend the use of surgical mask for healthy individuals due to shortage of masks for medical workers and lack of evidence regarding its effectiveness in preventing the spread of the virus. WHO recommends the use of a surgical mask for infected persons or people taking care of them. The use of surgical masks by infected people has proven to reduce the spread of coronavirus. WHO is also hesitant in recommending public use of homemade masks for healthy persons. This is mainly because of the risk of false sense of security provided by mask, which makes people neglect other hygiene and physical distancing measures. Also, improper handling of a mask can increase the risk of self-contamination by touching or reusing masks. It has been observed that people often remove the mask to cough, sneeze or wipe their face which limits its effectiveness. Although there are several risks associated with use of mask, international agencies like European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control ECDC, supports its importance. There are studies which indicate that the virus can spread through pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic persons. Pre-symptomatic persons are those who are already exposed to the virus but are in the initial phase of 5-6 days when they do not show any symptoms. Whereas, asymptomatic persons are those who are exposed to the virus but do not show any symptoms throughout the infection. What this means is, a mask can reduce the droplet coming from an infected person who might not be aware of their infection. Therefore, if everyone starts wearing mask, it can increase the chances of protecting others from our own infection. But it may not fully protect us from being infected when someone sneezes around us. That's why the use of mask alone is not sufficient and not effective in reducing transmission of COVID-19 and it should be considered as a complementary protection to the measures recommended by WHO and ECDC. So, what are these important measures? Well, only if we maintain physical distancing of at least 1 meter, avoid touching the mouth, nose and eyes, wash our hands regularly, cover our nose and mouth while sneezing and coughing, and stay home when ill, then the use of mask will be effective. Mask should be used in the right way. According to WHO and ECDC, a mask should cover nose and mouth and tied well so that no gap is left between face and mask. Avoid touching the mask while wearing it. Wash hands before and after using a mask. While taking off a mask, do not touch the front and untie it from behind. Replace the mask as soon as it is damp. Reusable and washable masks should be washed at 60 degrees Celsius. The benefits and risks have been weighed by several countries before recommending public use of masks. This brings us to our next important discussion on cultural and social aspects of masks. Masks are socially accepted in many Asian countries like China, Thailand, South Korea and Japan where wearing a mask is an important part of personal hygiene. Moreover, the previous experience of SARS increased pollution level and mask as a fashion accessory has contributed to its acceptance. Contrary to this, in western regions such as US and Europe, only ill people are known to wear masks and therefore, here a mask represents personal health condition. Most Asian countries have made public use of mask compulsory. In some parts of India and China, not wearing a mask is even a punishable offence. On the other hand, in Europe, only a few countries have recommended the public use of masks. In Austria, masks are compulsory in supermarkets, food and drug stores. Whereas, in Slovakia and Czech Republic, it is mandatory to wear a mask outside of home. 
In Germany, where lockdown measures have been relaxed recently, wearing a mask on public transport, long distance train and shops is required. But UK and Netherlands are following WHO's advice and do not recommend any type of mask for healthy individuals. In the US, contrary to initial advice against the use of mask, cloth masks are now recommended in public settings. While some countries agree to the benefit of public use of mask in decreasing infection, there is no scientific evidence that show effectiveness of mask alone. Even in countries such as Switzerland and the Netherlands, where widespread public use of mask has not been recommended, the number of cases have decreased by following physical distancing and other hygiene measures. In countries with high population densities, physical distancing is challenging. In India, where use of homemade mask is made compulsory, people are generally wearing a mask, but the practice of physical distancing has been taken lightly. In this specific example, when officials were criticized for not following physical distancing measures, they responded that it is a small mistake and as everybody is wearing a mask, so that is probably good enough. This statement reinforces the concern of false sense of security raised by WHO. The cultural and social differences in masks have also caused discrimination and hate. There are examples where people not following the cultural norm of a region have been attacked. Promoting public use of masks can prevent these discrimination and discrimination against people who are ill. When masks are not recommended for all, people with symptoms might also be hesitant to wear a mask in public. So, should masks be made compulsory everywhere in order to prevent spread of COVID-19? Well, given the fact that masks can prevent droplets coming out of a person who is not aware of own infection, public use of homemade masks should be recommended. To sum it up, with the low effectiveness of homemade masks and the risk associated with using them, it is important to realize that the use of masks alone is not sufficient. Only by following hygiene measures, a mask can prove to be effective. Thank you for staying with us till the end of this video. We really hope you enjoyed it and do let us know what your views are in the comments below. If you like this video, do share it with your friends and family. This was the first time we made a video on science and research related topic and hope to make many more in the future. And to support our video, we have also written an article whose link you can find in the description below.